Now that we have Angular displacement, we're off to the races. Now we just copy all the old translational kinematics formulas. So let's do that. Angular velocity, what was the definition before? It was the displacement over delta t. Same thing now. Omega is the symbol for angular velocity. It is a vector because the angular displacement is a vector. They're all vectors. So delta theta over delta t. So you remember that's the final minus the initial theta, the direction is along the axis of rotation over delta t. Or if you want the instantaneous omega, remember we don't put the instantaneous symbol on there. If you see it without a symbol, that means it's instantaneous, um, was the derivative d theta dt. And this is why we have to know that the angular position is also a vector because there's no displacement here. It's the, the infinitesimally small derivative. So one way we use these is we, for average or for a constant omega, we can take this formula and come up with this, theta final equals theta initial plus um, omega t. All right, so that's one of your kinematics equations for constant omega. And one thing I've done mathematically here is this is a single rotation axis, so drop the vector notation. We did that in translational as well, I believe. It's the same as saying this is just 1D motion. We're only going around uh, one axis, so we don't need all the vectors. Uh, let's look at angular acceleration. What was the definition? And also, I want to point out not the centripetal acceleration. We're not talking about uniform circular motion. Centripetal. All right, that was AC. This is not AC. This is called alpha. So we use the symbol alpha um, to represent angular acceleration. It is a vector. And for now, let's look at the average alpha. Well, it's delta omega. Omega final minus omega initial over delta t. Just like translational acceleration. And we can also say the instantaneous alpha is the derivative, d omega dt. Okay. I forgot to do units. So the unit here for omega is radians per second. And the unit here for uh, angular acceleration, alpha, is radians per second squared. And what else can we do? We like to uh, take this one, final minus initial, and write an equation assuming constant uh, alpha, constant angular acceleration, where we say omega final equals omega initial plus alpha t. All right. Now we're going to leave out the vectors again because we're in 1D. So we have that equation for constant alpha. Right. We leave off the average notation because it's constant. And then we can also combine these and do some uh, calculus to say, what if we have constant angular acceleration and we want to know what happens to the position, the angular position, theta final equals theta initial plus omega initial t uh, plus 1 half alpha t squared. There you go. Also for constant alpha. If you have never taken a physics course before and you have stumbled in to this course and you thought you liked it until you saw this and you have no idea what's going on, I understand. That's because we've already done all the math for this for translational, right? So go take one and do part one and do translational first where this is explained in painful detail with diagrams and all kinds of stuff. Here we're just blowing through it because we've already done it once. And you can see so far it's exactly the same. X final is X initial plus V naught T plus one F A T squared. The uh, other commonly used um, kinematics equation was really a combination of these. Remember, this is really all you need, but sometimes you just know a constant acceleration over a distance. So here, that's to say, you know a constant angular acceleration over a, a rotation. So there's also, I guess I don't remember what I called it before, there's like the combo equation. You combine some, you do some tricky, um, some uh, tricky, Algebra, there we go, plus 2 alpha delta theta, and you can get that. The final angular velocity squared equals the initial angular velocity squared plus 2 alpha uh, times the angular displacement. 
exactly the same as vf squared is vi squared plus 2ad. Okay. So it's all the same. So I think what we'll do uh, next, we'll just do a quick problem to show you that it all works exactly the same. You just got to remember to use radians instead of meters.